My next guests today that I'd like to welcome to the show are Jill and Maureen Meredith. Thank you so much for, for coming to see us today. I really appreciate it um, because you ladies have a, have a fascinating story to tell in terms of, of where you are today and what you do, but also because before the show you brought in an absolute treasure trove of photographs. Um, and I love it at home when we're looking through the old sort of the family archives and the photos that we've got of this person and that person. And I'm only a bit gutted that I could only pick out three, but um, I really <coughs> wanted us to have a chat about a few of them. And this one in particular, if you could tell me who this amazing lady was. Well, this lady, this is our great, great aunt. Um, her name is Rachel Powell, and she was the matron of the fever hospital. Um, in the War up in the Warwick Road, and it's not where the old Neathrop Hospital uh, used to be. It was behind that. It could have been where the Pines were, and she actually died through nursing one of the patients there. Oh, yeah. So but she really she gave her life for yes, the cause. Yes, literally. And I think this photograph dated, you said about eighteen ninety ish, roughly. Yeah. And her family, um, <coughs> her sister, who was our great grandmother. That was Anne Powell, and they lived up in the old Neathrop, the Neathrop been the area, yeah. village mm. in those days there. And uh, yeah, no, she was the matron. No, yeah. the she was the matron as matron. well. Yes, yeah. she was the matron. Wow. Yes. Well, she looks. She does look a very, a very stern and commanding lady, but clearly yes. had <laughs> had a, a heart to match all of her abilities yes. as well. Yes do that and so and so your family has been in the area for oh on our mother's centuries. side yes after yes. centuries on mother's family side, born yeah. yes long, wow long time. <laughs> that's incredible it really is and this this second photo I really I really love this it's, it captures the moment I think it's incredible how you can even you know sort of read the the stacked up boxes in the background for delivery to some shop and it actually says some um, food products carefully printed on the box. Perhaps you can tell us a little bit about this one and where it was taken. Yes, this is Mum walking in the High Street mm -hmm. in Banbury. And I think the little dog was something to do with her behind, I don't know. <laughs> but it's fascinating when you, I, I think that's where the High Street just bends round a little bit. Mm -hmm. And she would have been about nine, do you think? Nine, nine and ten. What would that be then? About 1935, 36 1935, yes. And, uh, no, it's amazing. When you walk down High Street now, you often look back and you think all the members of our family who walked walked down here <laughs> have walked those lanes and yeah, yes. and trod in those steps. So, and um, and then of course, sort of moving forward, we move into into colour photography. So <laughs> we do get there, and actually, it's a picture that you're in. <laughs> so, yes, <I'm> <laughs> and this is um, this is a picture of when you were. This is because I taught at St Mary's School mm -hmm. on the Southam Road for. 24 and a half years and this photograph is taken back about mid 1980s and rather what's interesting about it the old horse block there at the back mm. well, that's all demolished now and they've got a new school building there and also the building next door that was a unit well, that wasn't actually anything to do with St Mary's school it's for older teenagers I think um, but all of that's demolished now they've got the new building there and of course, you go through, and somewhere at the back here, I think, is um, Hilliers, isn't it? Yes. Garden centre. And of course, in the, going back in those days, you could go across the car park and into the precinct through the subway. And of course, that's completely changed mm. now with all, all the road and everything. But uh, yes, well, me. Back, <laughs> I was thinking, going back years, about where St Mary's is, if you just went past there, you could go through a caravan site. And you wouldn't believe this, you were out into the countryside then. Really? And we used to go through there and down by the river and be fishing and picnics. Mm. Mm. Wow. And actually, Long time ago. our grandmother, she was a pupil at, went to St Mary's School. <gasps> so she was <laughs> a pupil at that, the yes. school and yes. then you taught, taught there, yes. at the school. Yeah. And this is one of the things that I find that is so fascinating because you've both worked in education for a really long time. But you, um, and you travelled that road in one particular direction and then you made a huge change mm. and you you changed from teaching within the within the state system to um, to running your own business and yeah. can you tell can you tell me a bit about that and sort of how that happens and what you do now well start off because it was your yes it was, <laughs> <in the house. laughs> it was we lived in great portland at the time 
and although we've been doing the business now for nearly 20 years, it was some years before that, wasn't it? And I was upstairs in my bedroom and I remember I walked down the stairs and this is true, I was halfway down the stairs and it was just a flash of an idea came into my mind. You could set up your own business called The Three R's because people have been saying we've got to get back to The Three R's for ages. Mm. And I remember I got downstairs and I said to Mum, oh, I've had an idea. And she said, oh, well, you know, if you think it will work. <laughs> <laughs> and it was some years after that before we started it. And what was it when you, what was it that really sort of crystallised that for you, that this is the way that you wanted to go? Well, <laughs> you say well you both of us, we could see what was happening in teaching. Um, it changed, I mean, take that photograph, for example, back in the 80s. It was very enjoyable then, wasn't it? Was it? Lovely it was then. fun. It and really go in, um, get the results. Enthusiasm. We could see the way it was going. Came more and more stressful, more and more paperwork, and I think that pushed us. We're going to do yes. it. So in 1997, and also we would have always preferred to be our own bosses. Mm. But uh, it's a job you can't teach properly unless you're feeling really enthusiastic and excited about the whole thing. But you know, if you're mm. working till midnight every night doing paperwork, paperwork and all over the weekend, I just don't see how you can have the. <laughs> The zing to do the job, yeah, really. The but, I mean, we, we love what we do. We love, love it, mm. really love it. We get a real buzz during our lessons. So, who do you work with? Just us two. So, yes. and who do you work with in terms of the children? So, what sort uh, of ages take and what do you offer? From age from six to fourteen. Uh huh. Um, we don't have any more than eight between the two of us, and it's English and maths. I must make a tremendous difference working in small groups. Oh, it does. It's very, very rewarding. You see the results and the children gain a lot of confidence. And it, no, it's, it's we enjoy what we do. So much feedback from parents saying, oh, you know, you were struggling in maths and mm. now he's come out top of the class and we can see the change in him in the confidence. It, it's really yeah. rewarding. And actually, I know the two of you are, are too nice to mention it yourselves, but I'm quite happily to blow your own your trumpet for you. I happen to know that it was only a couple of weeks ago that you were stopped just oh, not far right. from here at all, by a lady who said that not only had her child passed the exam that you'd been helping them to study for, but that they had also gained a scholarship right. yes. for that as well. To hear that sort of you know testimony, that sort of testament to your to your skills and your passion, it must be terribly rewarding. It's very rewarding. Well, that indeed. was really exciting, and, yeah. and to have it, it was twice in the space of half an hour. <gasps> wow. Just Gosh. walking back through the marketplace and through the precinct. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it just shows that you know that if you if you really have a passion for something, and um, then you have that opportunity to share that passion, that there's there's no limit as to where it can take you and and what you can do. That's right. Yeah. And certainly from the sounds of it, as you know, of two of Banbury's custodians of the past, but I think also of the future with with the children that you're helping and that you're teaching as well. Yes, yes. So, that's right. Yeah. So if there are any parents watching today who would like to know a little bit more about what you do, is that how can how's the best way to get in touch with you? Uh, we have a website mm -hmm. and also a Facebook page. Um, Put on the phone number. Phone. <laughs> 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 What's your website? Uh, it's www.the3rs-tuition.co.uk. Fantastic. And I have to put the write the word three, not do the number. Okay. And say so we've got a Facebook page mm -hmm. and. Telephone number. Do you want the telephone number as well? Oh, you can give the telephone number as well, absolutely. <laughs> one, two, nine, five. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can get this Let's right. Get the right. Two, seven, five, three, oh, four. Wonderful. That's great. Oh, well, thank you very much for coming in and thank you for sharing your stories. Sick.